Samsung just revealed its new flagship mobile chip, the Exynos 2600, and on the surface, it sounds like the usual yearly upgrade, smaller manufacturing node, faster performance, better efficiency. But if you listen closely to what Samsung is pushing, this chip is not only about making a phone feel quicker, it is about changing where intelligence lives. For years, the world has moved toward cloud-based AI, meaning the biggest models live in massive data centers, and our devices act like screens that ask the cloud for help. Exynos 2600 feels like Samsung is trying to pull part of that intelligence back into the device, so your phone becomes a real AI computer in your pocket. This matters because the industry is dealing with two frustrations at the same time. First, phones keep getting more powerful, but the day-to-day -day experience does not always feel revolutionary. Second, AI has become more centralized than ever, with many features depending on server farms you do not control, owned by a small number of companies. Samsung's bet with Exynos 2600 is simple to describe. Put more AI power on the edge, meaning on the phone itself, so it can work instantly, privately, and all day, without always calling the cloud. Let's unpack what Exynos 2600 actually is. It is a full system on chip, meaning CPU, GPU, NPU, memory controllers, and more, all packed into one brain that runs the entire device. The headline detail is the manufacturing process, a two nanometer gate all around design. Smaller nodes are not magic by themselves, but they can improve the power to performance balance, which is exactly what on-device AI needs. AI features are not like opening a calculator once. They can be constant, summarizing, translating, enhancing photos, helping you write, cleaning up audio, and organizing your life in the background. If the chip cannot do that efficiently, the battery suffers, the device gets hot, and the AI feels like a gimmick. Samsung also made an interesting design choice on the CPU side. Instead of the classic idea of a few big cores, some mid-cores, and a set of tiny cores, the layout shifts toward more mid-level cores to cover more real-life workloads smoothly. That can help because many tasks people do are not burst to the max for one second. They are steady, everyday workloads like multitasking, messaging, camera processing, and now AI features that run in small pieces throughout the day. The goal is not only peak speed, it is consistent speed without burning power. Then there is the NPU, the part designed for neural networks. This is where Samsung's bigger message becomes clear. The NPU is not there only for a few camera tricks. It is there because generative AI and personal AI assistants are becoming part of the phone's identity. When an NPU gets stronger, the phone can run more models locally and it can run them more often. That changes how apps can be built. Instead of sending every request to a server, your phone can handle many tasks right there, which can mean faster results and less data leaving your device. On the GPU side, Samsung is continuing its graphic story with its Xclipse line, which has been tied to modern rendering features like ray tracing. But the more important point is not gaming bragging rights. The more important point is that GPUs and NPUs together can support AI-heavy workflows, including image generation, upscaling, frame generation, and smarter video pipelines. In simple terms, Samsung wants the chip to be good at the kind of mixed workload the next wave of phones will face. A bit of graphics, a bit of AI, a bit of camera, a bit of multitasking, all within tight power limits. Now here is where the strategy gets interesting. If your phone can do more AI locally, your relationship with the cloud changes. You still need the cloud for huge tasks, massive models and heavy training, but many daily features can become local first. Think about rewriting a message in a different tone without sending your draft anywhere. Think about summarizing a voice note without uploading your private audio. Think about searching your gallery by meaning like the parking receipt from last week without shipping your entire camera roll to a server. Think about translation that feels instant because it is not waiting for network speed. These are the kinds of small but constant features that can make a phone feel smarter in a real way. Local AI also changes the feeling of reliability. Cloud AI can be amazing, but it depends on signal, server load, subscriptions, region limits, and privacy trust. On device, AI can work even when the internet is weak and it can keep your personal context closer to you. This does not automatically mean everything is private because software choices still matter, but it can reduce how often your data must travel. 
That is a powerful promise for the next generation of consumer devices. This is also where a quiet conflict begins to form with the data center model of AI. NVIDIA is the symbol of that model because its strongest position is powering the big AI infrastructure used for training and large-scale inference. Exynos 2600 is not trying to enter data centers, and it is not trying to replace server GPUs, but it can still change the economics at the edges. Every time a phone handles a task locally, that is one less call to a remote compute farm. Multiply that by billions of devices, and you can see why the edge matters. It does not destroy the cloud, but it can shrink the cloud's control over everyday intelligence. To be fair, the future is not going to be fully local or fully cloud. It will likely be a hybrid world. Local chips handle quick, personal, low-latency tasks. Cloud systems handle huge models, heavy reasoning, and large-scale services. The real shift is about balance and power. If local AI becomes good enough for most daily features, the phone maker gets more influence, and the cloud provider becomes more of a partner than a gatekeeper. Samsung is one of the few companies positioned to play this game because it controls more of the stack than most competitors. Samsung is not only a phone brand, it is a giant display maker, a major memory supplier, and a company with deep semiconductor manufacturing. That matters because AI performance is not only about raw compute. It depends on memory bandwidth, power delivery, thermal design, camera sensors, and software integration. When a company can coordinate more of those parts, it can build a more complete experience, at least in theory. Now let's zoom out to the competition. Apple is the obvious comparison because Apple has long been strong in designing chips that match its software goals. Apple can push on device features in a controlled ecosystem and developers can target a predictable hardware base. Qualcomm is also a major competitor because Snapdragon chips power many Android flagships and Qualcomm invests heavily in AI acceleration and developer support. For Samsung to make Exynos a true platform, it needs to win on consistency performance per watt, modem reliability, thermals, and long-term software tooling, not just one year of benchmarks. The China factor adds another layer. Chinese brands move fast, and some are developing their own chips, but advanced manufacturing access can be a limiting factor. If Samsung can deliver strong 2 nanometer products at scale, it could hold an advantage that is not easy to copy quickly. But that advantage only matters if the chips ship in real devices, in real volume, with real stability. NVIDIA's strength is not only chips, it is a deep ecosystem of tools and partnerships. Samsung has to invest long-term if it wants developers to treat Exynos as a first-class AI target, rather than a chip that is sometimes used in some regions. Quick mid-video check-in. If you are enjoying this kind of breakdown, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It helps a lot, and it tells YouTube you want more content about chips, AI, and the real strategy behind the tech. So what would success look like for Samsung if Exynos 2600 is the beginning of a longer plan? You would notice AI features becoming faster and more normal, not as special tricks. You would see more tasks working offline or with weak internet. You would see apps designed with local inference in mind, using the cloud only when needed. Over time, you would also see the same local AI-first approach spread across more Samsung products. So devices cooperate rather than acting like isolated gadgets. In that future, the question changes. It stops being only which phone is faster. It becomes who controls intelligence at the device level. Now, tell me what you think. Do you believe the future of AI is mostly cloud, mostly on device, or a mix of both? Write your answer in the comments. And if you want a follow-up video comparing Samsung's approach with Apple and Qualcomm, make sure you like and subscribe so you do not miss it.